Welcome to Grace Digital Presentation. Archangel. The rank of Archangel is held by only one angel in the biblical record. The word Arch means head, so this angel is the most prominent of all the holy angels. The name of the Archangel is Michael. This name poses a question, who is like God? Probably numerous parents, both Jews and Gentiles, who call their boys Michael have no idea what the name conveys. This is unfortunate because it would be great if the thoughts and hearts of people were directed to God every time they hear the name. As we shall see, men who received visions of angels often wanted to worship creation rather than the Creator in the Bible. So how appropriate is it that the name of Michael, the Archangel, invites us to direct our attention to the Almighty God? The prophet Daniel introduces us to Michael. It seems that he prayed, and God had sent him an answer by the hand of a messenger, who was prevented from traveling. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me twenty-one days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Daniel 10:13. So Michael had to wrestle for the unobstructed passage of God's word. It might be proper to give Michael the title of general, for each time we see him, it is in connection with some type of spiritual struggle. In his role as a fighter, Michael has a particular responsibility to Israel. Daniel 10, 21. But first I will tell you what is written in the book of truth. No one supports me against them except Michael, your prince. Daniel 12, 1 At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. In Daniel 10, 21 and 12, 1, he is said to be the prince of that nation. As we read ancient and modern history, I believe we see the hand of Michael defending Israel. In addition to the Old Testament references, we also find Michael, who is mentioned in the New Testament. In the little book of Jude, the ninth verse specifically calls Michael an archangel and recounts his battle with Lucifer over the body of Moses. With the help of the Lord, Michael has won. Jude 1, 9 But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander. That wasn't the only conflict between Michael and Lucifer, for John tells us in the book of Revelation, then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Revelation 12, 7-9 here we see Michael commanding a large group of angels. Evidently, Michael is the chief warrior of God. Gabriel The only other angel whose name is mentioned in the scriptures, except Lucifer, is Gabriel. The meaning of Gabriel is Mighty One of God. He lives up to his name, for he is indeed doing great things. Instead of being a fighter like Michael, Gabriel serves God as an ambassador. He appears several times in the book of Daniel to give important revelations about future events, especially about the kingdom of God. After one of Daniel's visions, for instance, the prophet queried about its meaning. Then suddenly, while I, Daniel, was watching the vision and trying to understand it, 
There before me stood one who looked like a man. And I heard a man's voice from the Ulai calling, Gabriel, tell this man the meaning of the vision. Daniel 8, 15 through 16. Gabriel did. We have something similar in Daniel 9, where following Daniel's prayer of confession of sin on behalf of his people, Gabriel again came to him, being caused to fly swiftly. Daniel 9, 21. Thus, in the Old Testament, we see Gabriel's ministry in connection with the kingdom. In the New Testament, he is concerned with the king. In the first instance, Zacharias was waiting before the Lord in the temple. Suddenly, there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Luke 1, 11. Gabriel identified himself to Zacharias. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. Luke 1, 19. This good news concerned the imminent birth of John the Baptist, who was to be the forerunner of the Lord Jesus, the ruler of Israel and the world. It was the same Gabriel whom God sent to the city of Nazareth one day, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Luke 1, 27. What a great announcement Gabriel had to give to make this young lady. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Luke 1, 31 and 32. Gabriel then is the one who carried the message of God concerning the coming kingdom and the king. God gave this particular angel that wonderful luxury and responsibility. Categories of Angels Godly Thrones, Dominions, Principalities, Powers There are two passages from the writings of the Apostle Paul that appear similar at first glance. Let me show you a difference. In Colossians 1, 15-16, we read these words. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him, for him. These classifications seem to refer to the divine powers of orders of angels, about which very little data is available except their names. Lucifer We learn the original name of the angel Satan in Isaiah 14, 12. That verse not only names him, but also tells us something vital about him. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, sun of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. Once Lucifer was up there with God, but not any longer. Why? He was cast down because of his pride and ambition. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zephon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Isaiah 14, 13 through 14. Because of his own ego and because of his promotion of himself, Lucifer lost his lofty position in heaven. He fell from the Father's divine grace. So where does he operate now? He is right here on earth. Two different times our Lord described Lucifer as being the prince of this world. John 12, 31 Now is the time for judgment on this world. 
now the prince of this world will be driven out. John 16.11 And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. This earth on which we live is under his authority. While the angels Michael and Gabriel, as far as we know, have only single names, Lucifer has many that point to facets of his evil character. Many people know two of his other names better, Satan and the devil. Jesus also called him the evil one. John 17, 15 My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. The book of Revelation assigns him a virtual dictionary of names, including the Old Serpent, the Great Dragon, the Destroyer, the Accuser, and the Deceiver. I often think of Lucifer by another name, that of the Tempter, as it was he who came to tempt Jesus through his stay in the wilderness. Matthew 4, 1-3 then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. We pray you get a way deeper understanding as you watch our videos.